This is Evangelist George McTire of the Word of God Ministry, and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to my thoughts on this issue about the killing of the young man, I think his name is Trayvon Martin in Florida, and the situation regarding the shooter who's uh, last name I believe is Zimmerman if I don't have the names right uh, you'll excuse me because I'm not actually reading the story uh, line per se and I know the, my thoughts about this issue are going to be a little controversial but let me give you some background on why I have come to some of the conclusions that I am espousing on this uh, message. First of all, when I was in the military, I was in a unit known as the Air Police. In other words, I was a policeman. And through my training and so forth, one of the things uh, we were always told is how to look for evidence or how to glean evidence from situations where the normal average person that's not involved in law enforcement uh, would not be able to see uh, certain things whereas I am able to see or hear certain things and judging from what I've heard and so forth I'm able to uh, make certain determinations which in this case there is a lot going on that quite frankly is more uh, along the lines of overreaction even though I understand you know and naturally I feel uh, sorry for the parents that lost their son but this whole situation about uh, the particular incident in which Trayvon Martin, I believe his name is, was shot and killed. Uh, there's a lot of what I call misdirection of complaints and so forth to the point I've heard people say that police aren't doing enough to uh, arrest this individual in, in the black community. Black leaders are talking about that uh, Zimmerman should be arrested and charged with first degree premeditated murder that uh, Trayvon was only out with uh, buying some Skittles and some some energy drink or something like that uh, and you know that that could possibly be true but then again at the same time I'm also aware that when uh, sometimes uh, in situations, and I'm not saying uh, saying this about Trayvon, but there have been situations where parents, knowing that their child might be guilty of something, try to paint the child as being anything but uh, uh, criminal. But I'm I'm going to leave that alone because, like I said, I don't know Trayvon. I, I wasn't there I didn't see what happened anything else like that and come to think and and by the same token neither were any of these black leaders and any of the neighbors uh, uh, the blacks whites or whatever it is that this, this reported on this issue and things nobody knows what happened that night because at one time I thought it was during the daytime until I heard some of the tapes where they were talking about somebody was move, walking around with flashlights or something. So I don't I don't know the timeline of this, uh, but I do I'm aware now that it happened at least a month ago. Because the whole argument is why hasn't this man been arrested? And so I'm going to address why there should not be a first degree murder charge placed on Zimmerman 
and the fact that he could very well possibly have been acting in self-defense. And so I'm going to I'm going to give you my viewpoints on this if you want to drop me a line and uh tell me why you want to disagree with me that that's fine. I don't I don't care about that. Uh you can drop the line uh go online. Uh if you're looking at YouTube, you can contact me on YouTube or however you get it. You can, if you get a link you know you can contact me through an email or whatever or on Facebook whatever but here are my thoughts about this situation now listening to the tapes of the night in question when all this stuff happened we have the supposedly Zimmerman talking to the police about some strange some some young man acting strange or something while he, Zimmerman is sitting in his car and evidently Trayvon was out on the street doing something that drew this neighborhood watch captain's attention to him and he's reporting how Trayvon was acting now at some point I heard Zimmerman tell the police that the young man had seen him sitting in the car and was actually approaching Zimmerman's car. But at some point, he turned off and went in another direction. Now, evidently, Zimmerman decided to get out of his car or he may have been driving along. I don't, I don't know whether Zimmerman... I think Zimmerman might have been driving behind Trayvon or he might have got out and got on foot at that particular time and followed Zim, uh, followed Trayvon. But anyway, here is where my problems come in. Uh, first, people are saying that Zimmerman should have followed the police or officer's instructions as to not be following Trayvon. Well, I have to disagree with that based on this one thing. I didn't know the makeup of the neighborhood, but if you have, let's say, for instance, four or five black youths out on the street all dressed almost similarly the same, when Zimmerman gave a description of Trayvon, if Zimmerman was not there to positively identify Trayvon as this person that was acting strange, when the police get there and they look and see about four or five black youths out on the street or black men out on the street, the police, uh, what are they going to do? Stop and, and check each and every one of them? I can hear that now coming from black leaders. Oh, it's racial profiling. So Zimmerman, in order to make sure that the police would get the right person that he was talking about, it was best that Zimmerman kept his eye on the individual that he was uh, reporting uh, to the police about. That's the first thing. So the situation the situation there is Zimmerman was doing the right thing because he was concerned about this one individual and to make sure that the individual because you know if the police had gotten there Zimmerman wasn't around this guy could have jumped behind some bushes uh, I don't think there were any vacant houses there or something but the, 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 the guy could have hidden and the police can't take all that time necessarily looking for one black person in the midst of I don't know how how many others might be in the neighborhood or on the street or whatever and maybe even if he had run in, gone into gotten back home uh, the police wouldn't have been able to find him unless somebody had followed him to see where he went so the idea of people thinking that because the police said they didn't need uh, Zimmerman following the guy 
in a neighborhood watch situation, you keep your eye on the individuals the, or the individual or individual. You usually do it at a distance, but uh, in that case, in this case, for instance, like I'm saying, following Trayvon, uh, Zimmerman was doing the right thing, irrespective of what the police suggested that he didn't do. Okay, now the next thing, judging from conversations I heard from Zimmerman then was the fact that Trayvon began to act more suspiciously by pulling his uh, his hoodie up over his head and things. That right there was a signal that he's trying to hide his identity for some reason or other so that raises more suspicion on him so Zimmerman continues to follow Trayvon now I heard a tape from I guess Trayvon was talking to his girlfriend or some girl on a phone and they were playing a recording of her talking to him uh, on the phone and he's explaining what's happening in that situation. Now in this area the first thing that jumps out to me that sounds kind of suspicious is this. He is talking to his girlfriend and explaining what is uh what's happening if it were me I'd be talking to my dad why he chose to talk to his girlfriend and not call his dad and say that a man a strange white man is following me uh, and I'm on such and such a street uh, can you come get me or come help me or whatever the case may be uh, and you know it, it just it, it, there's a whole lot of stuff here that just don't add up so anyway as I said that's the that's one of the first suspicious things he's talking to his girlfriend and telling her what's happening rather than calling his dad or his parent or whoever it was whose house he was staying at to tell them that he's being followed by a strange white man. Or the other thing which would have probably been even better is if he called the police and told them that he was being followed by a strange white man and in that instance uh, the police could have relayed the message back to this Zimmerman person that uh, the youth that he is following just called the police to say that somebody was following him and, and that could have kind of uh, iced the situation. Do you see my point there? Now here is my question. How, how or where did this recording come from I mean if I'm talking to somebody on a cell phone uh, now I will plead ignorance on this but if somebody I don't know of any cell phones that have recording mechanisms where you can be recording as you are talking to individuals or maybe the girl was at home but then again how was she recording the phone do they have a, a, a system set up that when uh, somebody calls they can record the messages on the phone how did how does that work because the girl says she was talking to him it's not like he called her house she didn't answer the phone and that there was a, a voice record you know voice uh, thing there in case you miss a call people can leave a message or a voicemail or something like that well if that's the case then she wasn't necessarily talking to him but then if she picked up the phone 
then doesn't the voice recorder go off? I don't know about that. But anyway, the, the point is this, that the girl says that she's talking to him and then she hears what sounds like some kind of a scuffle or something. And then supposedly there's a shot. And evidently the shot is what uh, killed that was Trayvon being uh, shot and killed after he supposedly was supposedly pleading for help or something like that. I couldn't hear it all that clear, but I, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. But see, here is where the problem comes in, why I say this is not a case of first-degree murder. Now, true, Zimmerman had a weapon. Now, whether he was allowed, supposed to be carrying a weapon or not, whether he was licensed to carry it, even if he wasn't licensed to carry it, it's still not first-degree murder. And I would go along on the caution on, on the fact of it being self-defense. Now, here's why I say that. If I, as a police officer or as a security guard or anything else, approach an individual and the individual is unarmed, I'm still going to have my weapon out because I don't know this individual does not appear to be armed, but they may very well be armed. So I'm going to have my gun out. We had an officer here in the city of Detroit by the name, his last name was, uh, was Officer Huff. Uh, I think it was last year sometime. He went into a vacant house or something after somebody reported some gunshots sounded like they were coming from the house, from this vacant house. Officer Huff went into the house with his gun still in his holster just to see what was going on. And he, as soon as he got in the door, he was shot and killed. And three or four other officers with him were also shot by this individual that was in the house. So when you're approaching for an officer or security guard or, uh, or whatever, if you're going to go into a situation like that, especially at night, you're going to have your gun out. That's the first thing. So I had no problem with that. The next thing is this. The girl says uh, there's some sort of an altercation. Now, if I'm going to be a, somebody that's going to shoot somebody in cold blood uh, with a 9mm gun, I think that's what Zimmerman was carrying, I don't have to get close enough to them to essentially uh, get into a physical altercation with the individual. I shoot them from a distance of at least 10 feet or so that way I, they wouldn't, I wouldn't have any problem I, you know nobody would be able to get their hands on me the problem that I have listening to the tapes is this there's a scuffle first then there's a shot now what does this tell me it tells me that Trayvon may have been unarmed but he decided to attack Zimmerman and in the struggle the gun goes off and Trayvon is killed. Now that's not first degree murder, that's self defense. The reason why I'm saying that is because if Trayvon had managed to get a hold of this guy's gun or maybe he even did have hold of the gun and in the struggle the gun went off so the 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 implication here is this it had to be self defense now people are saying well uh we still think it's murder well let's let's look at a situation once again it happened here in the Detroit area Last year, a white police officer, I can't, he wasn't in Detroit, he was from one of the suburbs, 
arrested a 16 year old I believe black man and instead of taking him to the police station and booking him and so forth decided to take him back home to his parents and he put put the young man in the car took him to his parents house they got out the car went into the building where the young man supposedly lived when the young man suddenly grabs at the officer's gun now mind you now the officer's gun is in his, in, in his in the officer's holster the officer didn't have the gun out the young man 16 years old grabs the officer's gun or goes for it and in the wrestling around in the altercation fought the ensuing altercation the police officer is shot and killed by this young man now where where was the outrage about the fact that this black uh, young man shot and killed this white police officer there was no no outrage about it but had the situation come to the point where in the struggle the white officer managed to get the gun and 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 the black the, the young man, the 16 year old that got shot and killed, black folks would have been up in arms marching up and down the street talking about racism and this is first degree murder. Do you see a double standard here? So my questions revolve around this. Is the shooter guilty of something? If anything, he's guilty of poor judgment. But to try to say he needs to be arrested for first degree premeditated murder that is not the case at all and like I'm saying uh, this tape of the girl talking to uh, to the officers I mean you know talking to the guy uh, while he's being a uh, uh, follow and so forth okay, no, where did that tape come from I still would like to know what recording device was she using to pet, catch this thing up and another thing that is telling about the 911 tapes where Zimmerman after the shooting you can hear uh, the, the tape says on the phone that he essentially was shocked that the young man had been shot and killed, that he had shot and killed his kid. So that meant then, uh, I mean, he's on he's on the phone and, and reporting that that he, you know, the the shot, you know, he had shot this kid, and he was all all upset about it. So it means to me that he had not, he had no intention of killing this kid which which quite frankly removes first degree murder off off the table it removes second degree murder off and and since there's only the the, th the three people there's only three individuals that know what happened that's Trayvon Zimmerman and God that's it Nobody was out there, like I'm saying, if this took place at night, which like I'm saying, judging from the fact that I'm hearing people talking about the fact people were using flashlights going around this, that, and the other and things and carrying on, it had to be at night. So there weren't any witnesses out there. All these people coming up talking about the fact that this is what happened, that what happened. They don't know jack about what happened because they weren't there. So the case, my case point is this, it's not first degree murder or second degree murder. You might possibly get manslaughter out of it, but I still can't see you doing that, uh, you know, justifiably if there was an altercation before the gun, before the shot was fired, because we don't know whether or not in the struggle Trayvon was trying to get the gun away from Zimmerman and the gun went off and killed uh, Trayvon 
I don't know whether anybody did the police uh, even check Trayvon to see if he had any gunshot residue on him, which would mean he had to be in close contact with the shooter when uh, he was shot. And like I said, since there was some sort of an altercation there, which was is uh, evident by what the girl described as what the sounds were on the uh, recording of some sort of scuffle before the shooting. So we got all of that to go uh, in favor of the fact that uh, it wasn't murder but a case of self-defense. So like I say, I feel sorry for the family but uh, in this in this situation and not only that, you know, uh, I understand that Zimmerman has a, you know, r as far as a racial issue is concerned. From what I understand, I might have misheard it wrong, but Zimmerman has a, a, a black child himself. So I don't know whether he's married to a black woman or whatever the case may be. But anyway, the racial issue, that's a red herring right there. I mean, you. I mean, you know, that's something that just needs to be tossed out the window. And is and I'm leaning more toward the fact of it being self-defense based on the situation. Like I said, an altercation with somebody uh, in which you should the person is shot and killed. That that's not first degree murder in, in any type of thing. And the fact is, it's self-defense because the if the person was grabbing for Zimmerman's gun, then Zimmerman had had a reasonable fear that if 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 Trayvon got a hold of his gun, that he would turn it on him and shoot and kill him. So that's the case for the self defense issue. This is Evangelist George McTire, but thank you for listening if you listened this far uh, to this message. We got to have cool heads about a lot of this stuff because when we get emotional, we start saying and doing things that just do nothing more than to cause more pain and more suffering for everybody. So... This is Evangelist George McTire again saying good day and may God bless you and your families real good.